Today's lesson is on dividing whole numbers by fractions and covers pages 33 to 34 in your Jump Math 7.2 book. So today we're going to be looking at dividing whole numbers by fractions. And first, it's best for us to look at the strategies we use to divide whole numbers by whole numbers. So if we are taking six meters of string and dividing it into two meter pieces, we'd end up with one piece, two pieces, and three pieces. So that's fairly easy for us to write down as six divided by two equals three. For this next example, we're going to take the same six meters of string, but instead of dividing it into two meter pieces, we're dividing it into half meter. So every half a meter, we'd make a cut. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we would see that six divided by one half is twelve. Now, what you may notice is that for each meter, you get two pieces, which is also 12. So we'll see today that there's a connection between dividing by one half and multiplying by that denominator. However, this is not a rule for everything. It only works if your numerator is one. So we'll learn about those different cases throughout the lesson. Question one asks you to answer the questions and complete the division statement. So they might ask you how many pieces of a length one third fit into one. So if we had one meter, we cut it into pieces that were a third, there would be three pieces. Therefore, one divided by one third is three. If we were looking for how many pieces of length one third fit into two, well, there would be three for each meter. So three times the two meters, which gives us six. So two times one third divided by one third is 6. Question 2 is going to use the second part of this. So if we're looking at finding the quotient, the quotient is the answer to a division question. So we're figuring out the quotient by turning it into multiplication. So if we're doing 9 divided by 1 fifth, that means 5 pieces fit into every meter and there are nine meters, so that will equal 45. So nine divided by one fifth is 45. Essentially, we're taking our whole number and we are multiplying it by the denominator in order to figure this out. Remember, this only works for questions like this where the numerator is one. We're gonna go through a breakdown that they give you in your book of how many strings of length two-fifths of a meter fit along a string of length four meters. So notice we don't have a numerator of one, so we're going to have to switch the way that we're approaching this. The first step they give us is to calculate how many strings of length one-fifth of a meter fit along a string of length four meters. So this is the top line we have here, right? We're breaking it down into fifths. So we have five, one, two, three, four, five for each meter. And so five, 10, 15, 20, that means it would break it into 20 pieces. So four divided by one fifth equals four times five, which is 20. Now, since two fifths is twice as long as one fifth, only half as many will fit, right? So we're fitting in 10 pieces because we're putting them at every second one. So divide the answer from step one by two. So if we look at the steps that we've got here, we're going, okay, if we have four divided by two fifths, our first step is to multiply by the denominator. And our second step is to divide by the numerator. And we're gonna break this down a little bit differently later on. Okay, question number three is basically looking at this situation again. So how many pieces of length two thirds fit into four? So we're looking at, okay, 
How many pieces of length one third fit into four? Well, one third means three for every meter, four meters, so that's going to be 12 pieces. Then I look and I'm gonna use the same number. So 12 pieces divided by our numerator here, right? It's going to be twice as long. So we'll have half as many groups equals six. So six pieces of length two thirds fit into four. Question number four asks you to write each answer from question three as a division statement. So if we look at question three, we were taking four meters of rope, we were dividing it into pieces that were two thirds of a meter, and the answer we got at the end was six. So that's all that you're doing for the last part. Now, question number five asks you to find the quotient. So once again, we're dividing. So they'll give us a question like nine divided by three fourths. So we're always going to start with our dividend. So that's the one that's on the end, right? Then we are going to multiply by our denominator. And finally, we're going to divide by our numerator. And that will give us the answer. So 9 times 4 is 36 divided by 3 is 12. Now I am going to give you one more way of looking at this. And this will be how you're approached a little bit more in high school. Another way to write 9 times 4 divided by 3 is to write this part as a fraction. So you could write 9 times 4 divided by 3. And that will work out the same way. 9 times 4 is 36 divided by 3 equals 12. We get the same answer. And what we call this is multiplying by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is when you flip the order of the fraction. So 9 divided by 3 over 4 is the same thing as 9 times so notice that we are changing our symbol here, our operation, and now we're going to flip the fraction times 4 over 3. So this is another way that you can look at solving it. We're multiplying by the reciprocal. So either they'll get you to write it out as a list, but once you get to C, D, E, F, G, if you want to write it this way, that is also allowed. If you are finished early and have no other work to do, I want you to start coming up with questions you can ask somebody else is finished. So write six multiplication or division questions that have fractions in them. Make an answer key, trade with a partner, trade back and see how you did. You can keep doing this for the rest of the time unless you come up with another quiet activity or you have missing work that you're finishing up.